the surgeon called and said, we have a bed. Looks like we had a deep freeze on this, eh? Look at him! A lot of this going on. Wrong pen, buddy. We are going to add a couple more to the retirement village. This is why you shouldn't get attached. Oh boy, that's a lot of water. So fun little fact about sheep is they will not cross the river. There will be a day that this will be funny. Today is not that day. It is uh, hopefully the day of surgery. We got called in last night. Uh, Jess was on her way home and the surgeon called and said, we have a bed, come straight to, come straight to London. So I met her down here last night at around 6, 6.30. The drive was horrendous. It was zero visibility halfway to the hospital and then it cleared up, thank God. By the time we got any information, I think it was around uh, 8.30 or 9 last night. Uh, Jess hadn't ate since like 1.30 because you have to fast before surgery. So she's like, you know what? You're not even gonna be put on the board till seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Go eat and eat as much as you want till midnight and then we'll have to shut you down. So uh, we ordered McDonald's through uh, Skip the Dishes and uh, it was delightful. It was the best McDonald's I think I've ever had. And then I tucked her in and actually stayed at a hotel last night because I texted Mark and I'm like, what are the roads like there? He goes, it's gross. And our plows actually don't go down the road after like 5 p.m. on a good day. So I was like, I'm not, I'm stressed enough. I'm not driving home. I didn't sleep great, but not because of the hotel, just because I don't sleep well anyway. And yeah, uh, just a little nervous about today. So uh, we don't know when she'll get called in uh she's not like urgent i'm thinking if they made her start fasting at midnight that they're assuming she'll be this afternoon or even into this evening getting surgery so this may be a whole weekend ordeal by the time we're done she hasn't had pain with this one but she said this week she's starting to feel the pain in her lower back so near her kidneys and that's um that's where she first discovered this issue last time was she had pain all fall in her lower back. So I'm glad we're getting this done now versus waiting until she's um, hunkered on the floor in screaming pain. So I'll take clips throughout the day, but for the most part, uh, we don't know what's going on yet. <laughs> I am hungry though. I think I might go get some breakfast. Morning, you guys. It's been a bit since I feel like I've talked to you. Uh, there's been a lot that's been happening in the personal life with uh, Jess's big weekend uh, in surgery. It was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be to watch her go into surgery virtually with no pain and then come out with a lot of pain was really hard hard to endure this weekend. So I'm, I'm exhausted actually, like mentally, I'm not here very well right now and I'm just trying to keep it like together. But what has happened is I did get my feed results back from Jamie on like, I think Thursday or Friday morning and I haven't been back to the barn to actually put them in my computer for poor Carissa. So I think we were pretty close, uh, just with kind of how I guessed last week. Uh, but I'm just doing some some minor little tweaks to it based on what they gave me here. So I've been working away at that, doing a bit of a bit of a catch up with Carissa to make sure I haven't missed anything while I was gone, to fill her in on what kind of my weekend uh, entailed. 
basically our Monday morning powwow. We have one, we try to have one every Monday morning when we reconvene for the week. And uh, she usually has lots of fun stories on Monday mornings, which she did. And uh, my stories are usually like, <laughs> Either A, my boring what I didn't do this weekend, or B, the uh, chaos and drama of whatever has happened on the weekend, which in this case is poor Jess. She's doing all right today. We were able to get her out of the hospital last night later. Um, her body had to do a few things before they would release her, and she finally, <laughs> the body finally cooperated. She's really, really, really sore. It hurts to move. It's been quite an ordeal. We thought we were kind of done with this whole part of her life a year ago. Um, it was much scarier a year ago because we we didn't know what we were dealing with, but uh, when I talked to the surgeon after her surgery on Friday, um, it was once again just a bit of a, a shock, and it's going to mean uh, quite a few more visits with our surgeon and um, just check up some follow-ups, so... Uh, yeah, it's just a it's just a life journey with Jess and a different health journey for her. I will say this as a parent. As a parent with a sick child, what I find is Anytime they touch her, anytime you see them wince, you feel it. And uh, so I have that whole side of it, and you do anything for them, you do anything to take away the pain. And then I come home, and there's Jack waiting for some updates. Like, he stayed home this weekend to, like, be a part of it, and I feel like we forget about him, and then I feel guilty about that. And those two are really close, and uh, it's been nice to see, just as adults, how they communicate between the two of them but it's been a really hard weekend. Well, on a brighter note, the boys, both Billy and Daddy, Father William here, are feeling much better, partly because they're being a little distracted. It is the beginning of the second cycle for some of these ladies. Billy. Look at him. Good boy. Look at you. So much better. I stuck my head in this morning and said to Carissa, oh my goodness, that's a lot of jumping. She goes, yeah. So the two mature U pens are really active today. Uh, the U lambs, not so much. So that might be good. It might mean our U lambs might lamb kind of all together in that first cycle. And then our mature U's, maybe we'll just have a few more of them lambing together in the second cycle. A lot of this going on. Wrong pen, buddy. Oh boy. Tis the season again. Hello, William. When I left on Thursday night, it was a blizzard and we got dumped on. So we've gone from like minus, I think Friday and Saturday was like minus 15 to minus 20 or something like that. And the wind chills were stupid. If you remember, I was stressed out about this barn <laughs> across the road and we opted to turn off the water overnight. It worked, like we had no frozen water. It was so good and no water leaks. So uh, just getting that text every morning from Carissa was like, <sighs> like sweet relief. Uh, however, the barn is still really tight. It's shut up uh, from those cool temps. And today is gonna be like zero. Tomorrow's supposed to be five. I think we're gonna be above zero all week this week. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess. And we need to get air to these lambs now that it's warming up.
Morning, ladies. Well, looks like we had a deep freeze on this, eh? Hmm. I broke their water pail. I cracked it when I tried to poke the ice out of it. Uh, so I'm using their little grain trough for now. And it actually fits way more water than the pail did. So that's like three full pails of water and it's not even full. So I actually might start using this for the water because when I go to break the ice out of this, I'm not going to break through the plastic because this is like rubber. These guys are good. I think Chris already did chores over here, so they are happy. They're not even really drinking the water, so they must have been eating some snow. <laughs> I have to run to town. I have to get, yeah, I have to get my real child groceries. You're not my child. You think you are, but you're not. You're Belinda's. You're just my foster baby. <laughs> she is fun. You are fun. Oh, wow, you guys. Mark just took me back and showed me the... You guys! He's been working on the floor off and on between hospital visits, and it looks really good. He's got a lot of it actually done. So I'm going to maybe uh, run to town, grab groceries, go to go to the hardware store, grab some stuff, nurse my daughter, and then go back and help him back in the cabin because there's really nothing pressing until tomorrow in the barn. As our weather is going to be changing, there's more things I still have to do. Um, we have, we're going through a lot of this dry hay, this third cut that we bailed up here that we've added to the ration. And we're going through, ooh, looks like she's gone through like a half a bale just this morning. So because it's going to get so mild, we don't really want to carve up this field like we've done on the other side. So I'm going to just retrieve about maybe four bales and then she's good for like a bit, three or four maybe. I've been spending the last 10 minutes or so hanging out with Ruby Sue. Today is the day, today is her day. She missed her natural breed, which I've given her a free pass because it's Ruby Sue. She also missed her first cycle because she's in heat today. That's her second cycle. So if she doesn't breed this go around, she's gonna go hang out with mama across the road. Uh, so yeah, we are gonna add a couple more to the retirement village. Ruby Sue, if she doesn't catch, but there's a, there's a boy trying to do his part, which is good. <laughs> she's really playing hard to get, but she's pretty smeared, so they have done the dirty deed. So both Ruby Sue and also Popcorn when she weans here in a couple, a week. I think I'm gonna try and wean them next week if I can get everything done this week that I wanna get done. Now Ruby Sue is very young, like there is no excuse for this, but I love her and she's Ruby's. You almost went on a track. I had to check your number. This is why you shouldn't get attached. You're so cute though. Look at that face. Oh my God. She knows it. Don't show off for me, show off for him.
this little slides on that thing. Click solid, do it. Looks good. morning it's not a good morning or I'd say good morning it's a bad morning we had a water bowl lose its plug overnight that group was breeding yesterday so whether they stood on it or played with it you, they're flush so I don't know how they would get that out but it doesn't happen often and when it does it is a disaster so I can't even move my use into here to clean this out I have nowhere to put my manure so I've already been sort of talking to Mark. I think what we're going to do is move these ewes over with their cohorts. They're going to, their pen will be smaller but it's dry so they can go over there and then I'll somehow get these to the other, the far side here so we can start working on cleaning this manure out and Mark's going to spend the morning trying to figure out where to put the manure that we already have outside somewhere else. So not exactly the best way to wake up but it seems to be the nature of what we do for a living. So fun little fact about sheep is they will not cross the river. They think this is a big black hole that they're going to fall into and they don't like that. So Chris and I just put a uh, bridge of straw here so they at least think it is dry land. So the problem with uh, not a planned clean out is that we're really bottlenecked with uh, stocking manure, like stockpiling manure. So this pad has way too much on it already. So we actually have to move this entire pile before we can even start cleaning out the, these pens today. We might only, we're probably only gonna get one today done and then hopefully we can get the, ne the next one done tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah, this is going to take all morning and then uh, we'll clean that pen out this afternoon. But it just pushes everything else that I had planned uh, for this week later, which is not ideal. This is a lot for me to handle today, to be honest, just after everything that's happened in the last few days. So um, probably good. I'm just going to shut my brain off and run a telehandler for the next two days. Oh boy, that's a lot of water. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna do a pen too. I shouldn't, my sciatic already hurts, but I uh, cannot handle a wet barn. So it's just, it's just gonna have to happen. I'm tired. There will be a day that this will be funny. <laughs> Today is not that day. It is officially almost 8.30. We've been working at this for 12 hours between outside and inside. Secretly, I wanted this job done a while ago anyway, but the weather has been garbage and we haven't been able to do it. So thankfully, we had that two hours this morning that Mark was able to stockpile in our winter barley field. And then he said, by the last load, we actually have a load still on the dump trailer. He said, no, it's mucking it up too much. Yeah, I don't know when that's gonna get dumped. I don't know when I'm gonna get the barn across the road done because now everything's melted. It's gonna be 10 degrees or something on Thursday. So uh, we're just gonna play it day by day, I guess. But because I did the second pen today, it's freed up tomorrow. And tomorrow so I can go back to my regular schedule of weighing lambs across the road. I should actually pull out the rams tomorrow too. So we'll see how the day goes. I may not have time to do that, so we can probably do that Thursday. Uh, but while I have you guys, before I get my really grumpy Lucy to the house, I wanted to show you the culprit today. I'll show you on another water bowl because I'm too lazy to go to the back. Mark figured out what is going on with these water bowls and why it doesn't happen very often. Sorry. So this is the plug. I thought maybe they were, they got it out, but there's, this is pretty, this is pretty flush for them to like play with. He's thinking maybe the bowl itself got really cold and contracted. And then when it warmed up today, um, he figures it, maybe there's pressure on it and it just blew this out back at the back. So regardless, I, I do have some new ones of these, I think in my, in my utility room. So tomorrow I may just replace that one for sure. Um, and then just have a good look. Mark said every time you have a freeze thaw, it might be a good idea just to make sure those are snug. But yeah, that was our culprit. I blamed you guys. I don't think it was your fault. 